Hello, my precious little eggies. Welcome to the 2021 Polaroid Buyer's Guide. Considering Polaroid has been releasing cameras more often than I miss with the Precision Bolt and Doom Eternal, I figured it would be a great time to refresh my last big Polaroid comparison video. I made that video a little over a year ago, and a lot has happened since then. We have two new cameras in the rotation. So today we're going to talk about all of the modern Polaroid options, the One Step 2, the One Step Plus, the Now, the Now Plus, and the Polaroid Go. It's interesting for me to do a video like this because I've been shooting on these Polaroids basically since the channel started, so a lot of video footage from here is from like four years ago now. It's almost like a retrospective of the channel. We're growing up together and I don't like it. <laughs> I have tons of experience with all of these cameras and frankly I don't even want to think about how much money I've spent on Polaroid film so let's quickly segue into what these cameras have in common. They all have some sort of point and shoot mode meaning if you or whoever you're buying the camera for have little to no experience with film photography the cameras have full auto modes. Some of them offer more advanced controls though. All of them use both the Polaroid iType and 600 film except for the Go. The Polaroid Go has its own format aptly named Polaroid Go film. Go figure. <laughs> I see what I did there. <laughs> Here's a quick important note though. The iType film is used only for the new cameras and is slightly cheaper than the 600 film because the 600 film can be used in both the new and vintage Polaroid cameras. The difference between the two is the 600 film has a battery pack to power the vintage Polaroid cameras and the iType film doesn't have a battery because all of these Polaroid cameras can be charged via USB and they all generally have pretty awesome battery life. And last but not least, all of these cameras do require a bit of maintenance for best performance, which involves cleaning the rollers regularly, storing the film in the fridge, and more. I have a whole video dedicated to best practices, so if you're buying one for yourself, make sure you give that a little watchy poo. Or if this is a gift for someone, well, make their holiday that much better with the gift of sweet and, and send them send them that video. Now let's talk about the differences between these cameras. The most obvious difference between these cameras is the size. That's what she said! <laughs> both of the cameras and of the film. The Polaroid Go is much smaller than the other Polaroid cameras and its photos are much smaller as well. Here's a quick size comparison. The oldest in the modern Polaroid rotation is the Polaroid One Step 2. This is a point and shoot camera and it was the first camera of the modern lineup. It's surely the cheapest now but you can't get it new through Polaroid anymore. You'd have to either go for a used one or get lucky on Amazon or B&H. The camera still holds up but I did give mine away on this channel. Hopefully whoever has it now is enjoying it. Though there's no Bluetooth connectivity, there are some advanced controls like a flash override and an exposure compensation switch. And I gotta say that switch was pretty clutch. I don't like the newer system, which I'll describe in just a second. The flash override button is kind of weird on these older cameras. It doesn't feel very tactile and you have to hold it while you fire the shutter in order to make the flash not fire. It's just not great and they improved it dramatically in the newer cameras. This is a fixed focus single lens camera focusing from about two meters to infinity. So make sure you don't get any closer than two meters to your subject and for, for people like me who live in America, that's six and a half feet. One last thought about the One Step 2, and this is something I talk about in my review, which you can watch in the description below. The camera has two versions. The original one that I have actually doesn't have the viewfinder tube, which makes it a little bit awkward when you're composing your photos. You can see here, there's no tube coming from the viewfinder. The second version of the camera is known as the One Step 2 VF, standing for viewfinder, which adds the tube, which makes the camera a whole lot better to use. Up next, we have the One Step Plus, which is basically a pro model of the One step two, same body, same button layout, same weird flash control button, but the camera has an added Bluetooth connectivity and a manual focus. Similar to the One Step 2, you can't buy this camera new from Polaroid anymore. You'll have to get it used or from Amazon or B&H. The One Step Plus is a ton of fun, but keep in mind it does come with some quirks that might not be the most friendly to a brand new photographer. Or even a seasoned one like me, but honestly don't go by me, I have fucking rocks in my head. The manual focus is an awesome feature. Basically the camera has two lenses, and when you pull the focus lever, you're switching between the two lenses. One lens is designed for portraits or close-up subjects, and one lens is designed for landscapes or faraway subjects. The focus lever is super important because it's very easy to forget to switch your focus back in between shots and then you're gonna miss an awesome moment and have a photo that is totally out of focus. <laughs> I have done that in the past for sure. The landscape lens is intended for photographs shot from 60 centimeters or two feet away to infinity, and the portrait lens is intended for photos shot as close as 30 centimeters or one foot away to about 90 centimeters, which is three feet away. The other important thing to note about this camera is that you're paying more for the Bluetooth connectivity. You unlock a ton of interesting creative modes like light painting and long exposure, but if connecting the app and manual controls don't really seem to be your cup of noodles, then this might not be the Polaroid for you. Up next, we have the Polaroid Now. 
Now, which came out after the One Step series. This one pulled back a lot of the fancy stuff with the Polaroid One Step Plus and went back to the basic point and shoot setup. The benefit of the Now though is that it has a seriously improved light meter as compared to the One Step 2. For people new to the Polaroid ecosystem or cameras in general, the meter is just how the camera judges light and chooses how to expose a photo. In my experience, the Polaroid Now has been the most reliable of the modern Polaroid cameras. I've been really happy with like 98% of the photos I've taken with that camera, provided you follow the best practices, which I have a video about, and you can go watch that too. The Now also brought the two lens system from the One Step Plus, but it made it autofocus, so when you set up your shot, the camera will choose the appropriate lens for you. I've taken loads of photos in the Polaroid Now, and I can't really remember a time where it misjudged focus, honestly. And just for the record, the portrait lens focuses from 0.55 meters to 1.3 meter or 1.8 feet to 4.2 feet, and the landscape lens focuses from 0.6 meters to infinity or about 2 feet to infinity. The Polaroid Now also introduces the new flash override button, which is really cool. It's way better than the old one. It's in a better position. It's more clicky. It's more tactile. It's easier to use. I don't know. I just feel like it's way more responsive. It's a better button in every regard, in my opinion. Now, here's what I don't like about the new flash button. Polaroid chose to remove the exposure compensation switch from the front of the camera and put it onto the flash button. So you have to hold it and then keep tapping it to switch between the normal exposure plus or minus. It's just kind of clunky compared to the old switch being on the front of the camera. And frankly, I don't know why they removed it. It's not like they were saving real estate or anything. It just really seems like they were trying to streamline it for beginners, which is cool. That's fine. But in doing so, they made it kind of more annoying for people who would like that feature. Not a deal breaker though. I have tons of positive things to say about the Polaroid right now. It's one that's undoubtedly going to stay in my personal collection for years to come. For the beginner or hobbyist who doesn't care about the more advanced features, this is the camera I would recommend the most. The most recent addition to the Polaroid family is the Polaroid Now Plus, which is the evolution of the Polaroid Now. Similar to the One Step 2 and the One Step Plus, the Now Plus takes the design of the Now and adds the more advanced features via Bluetooth connectivity. Hmm, someone predicted this a while ago in their videos. It has the two lens system, it has the better flash override button, it comes in this cool new blue color, though I will say I big regret not going with the classic white rainbow paint job, but hey, the blue is still pretty cool. To be fully transparent, I've owned this camera for the shortest amount of time. The Polaroid community has been pretty split by this camera. A ton of people are having issues with the app, and a ton of people are having issues with the camera overexposing every shot. While I personally haven't had these issues, I can't ignore a big chunk of the community. On my channel alone, the poll about the issue was almost split down the middle. At the price of Polaroid film and the lack of good answers to the problem, this camera might not be the top recommendation for beginners. It can definitely be frustrating for someone who isn't experienced in the Polaroid world, especially if you get a dud camera. Polaroid has yet to address the Now Plus issues at least to my knowledge, but I did an extensive exposure test which you can check out after this video. All the links and playlists are going to be in the description by the way. That said though, my overall experience with the Polaroid Now Plus has been mostly positive. The camera comes with several different colored filters that you can mess around with to get different effects in your photos. It of course has the Bluetooth connectivity with your phone and the app has been redesigned to work with it. It has light painting, long exposures, double exposures, all sorts of creative stuff to uh, tickle your fancy. <laughs> to me, one advantage the Now Plus has over the One Step Plus is the fact that it has the autofocus system, so you don't have to worry about messing up your focus with the lever on the top of the camera. Again, that might only be a problem for me and my massive brain. My brain sucks. The portrait lens on the Now Plus focuses from 0.4 meters to 1.3 meters or 1.3 feet to 4.2 feet and the landscape lens focuses from 1 meter to infinity or 3.2 feet to infinity and beyond. Real ones will remember that joke. But if really jumping into the manual controls and playing around with all these creative options sounds like it's up your alley, this might be the camera for you. Last, and in my humble opinion, least, is the Polaroid Go. The Polaroid Go came out between the Now and the Now Plus, and it's the first new Polaroid format since 1999. Which is honestly really cool to see. It makes me happy to see instant photography growing and getting new formats. However, it's just not my cup of noodles. The camera's entire hook is the idea that it's tiny. That, that's it. That's the whole camera. It's a full automatic... <laughs> it sounds like I'm talking about a fucking gun. <laughs> It's a full auto point and shoot. It has a flash override, it has exposure comp, and that's about it. It's pretty simple. The problems I have with it are mainly the conceptual. I don't get the frame size. I don't get what's so fun and exciting about these photos being small and cute. I, I mainly feel like that old lady meme when I'm looking at them. The Polaroid Go film is definitely not as sharp as the typical Polaroid frames. I've had issues with opacification failure and busted frames within my first few packs, so not a great start for the camera. The rollers are also pretty difficult
difficult to get into in order to clean them, which is kind of an issue as well. But we're, we're talking about a lot of negatives here. Here, I would want to give you at least one positive. There is a cool feature. The viewfinder window also acts as a selfie mirror. As cringe as it is to admit, I have used this feature, and I think that's ultimately what this camera is for. Selfies, close-up photos of friends. This would be a great party camera or like a, at a you know concert and you could take pictures of your friends up close. But beyond that, it's just a gimmick. Hands down, the best time I ever had shooting on this camera was during one of my short film productions. We got some fun behind the scenes photos. Those were my absolute favorites taken on this camera. But just typical stuff, like if you're shooting scenes, if you go on vacation or something like that, I don't think this is the move. I've also found that the Go has the worst battery life of the bunch. I mean, it makes sense. It is the smallest. The Polaroid Go has a single fixed focus lens system with a minimum focusing distance of 45 centimeters or 1.47 feet. To me, it is the most casual of the bunch. So if you are going to get one, just remember what it is. It's for fun. It's point and shoot. It's for parties, selfies, friends, stuff like that. Whichever Polaroid you go with, and I'm not trying to incept the idea of getting the Polaroid Go into your brain by saying it that way, you're probably going to have a good time. Instant photography is a ton of fun, as you can tell considering I talk about it a whole bunch on this channel. But for me, if I was buying one of these Polaroids for a loved one for Christmas or, you know, whatever holiday you celebrate, I would probably go with the Polaroid now. It's the most simple and it's the most reliable in my experience. Be sure to check out my Polaroid playlist for more. I have reviews of the One Step 2, the One Step Plus, and the Now. By the end of the year, I hope to have a review of both the Go and the Now Plus, so smash subscribe so you don't miss all that. Enjoy your new Polaroid, let me know if this video helped you out at all, and speaking of, this video is now over. Bye! Like, like and subscribe, and subscribe. Sweet, Sweet Lou Photography. Photography. Dumb Dumb man. Man.